afternoon, you two. I went green. If you've been following along in the social media pages of the Fabrication Series, such as Instagram or Facebook, you would have known that about six months before this video aired, I was searching for a new welder. In fact, I was searching for a bunch of welders because we have the fabrication and welding classes here at the shop. Now, I was going to stay blue. I really was. That's kind of one of those things that I've been sticking with for my entire life and I was a big fan. But it wasn't until a good friend of mine actually dropped me a line and said, hey, you really got to check out Everlast Welders. And I'm not going to lie not paid for this video i was seriously like who yeah <laughs> like no kidding i didn't know who they were but here's the deal i actually checked them out i looked into it compared some specs gave them a call talked to them about it a little bit and i bought the 255 ext one of the top of the line welders because i knew i needed something that was really going to get me through all of my welding classes all of my daily work everything else and i was so impressed with it that i bought the 210 ext right after that but it's a policy of the fabrication series to make sure that before we endorse anything, we actually put it through the ringer and we put everything to the test. Now I have done that over the course of the last six months with these two machines and I am actually here today to tell you a whole lot about them, some of the things that I absolutely love about them and what completely sold me on the concept. Let's start with the 255 EXT. Now throughout the course of this video, you're going to see the, uh, the two machines up here, the 255 EXT on the left and the PowerTech 210 EXT on the right. Now one of the biggest features that I look for in a welding machine, what really separates a good quality machine, you got to have that great arc, that fantastic control, lots of amperage, and a very decent price. And that's, you know, pretty much what sold me on the Everlast, you know, to begin with. But let's actually take a look at, you know, two of the uh, things that I weld here the most. I mean, one being thin wall steel, it's a 16 gauge uh, steel tube on some pies and we'll get in behind the arc real quick or behind the lens check out the arc buttery smooth nice and stable absolutely no fits throughout any of this and then we'll put it up on some uh, roll cage tubing standard steel uh, 120 wall thickness and it's just so smooth and like perfectly buttery throughout no fits whatsoever and that is really awesome at least to start with now I know what a lot of people are actually thinking how much can this little tiny shock box actually put out? Now it's rated on AC to put out 250 amps, which means it can weld half inch thick aluminum in one solid pass. Now I did it a handful of times and I'm definitely gonna do it on camera again, but I gotta throw in this little bit of a disclaimer here. I don't actually have the tungsten thick enough or the torch powerful enough or even the rod thick enough to run this pass. So it's not gorgeous, but just for the sake of testing, I pushed a 200 amp torch as far as I could possibly get it, and the results were still fantastic. Check this out. So I don't have the uh, correct diameter filler rod to actually run this pass smoothly, so I'm going to take three of them, 1 16th filler rods, and I'm just going to twist them up into a nice little bundle, and that should compensate for it a little bit. These are my half inch aluminum plates, uh, 6061 aluminum, no prep whatsoever. We're just going to fire it in and get welding on this thing. Now, here's the funny thing about video, 250 amps is insanely bright, so we actually had to stop this and uh, reshoot under different settings uh, to kind of darken it out so you can actually see. Now, as soon as I get to 250 amps, I'm just going to start plowing right through this, full throttle the entire way through. It took about a minute and a half for me to weld what I did, but this is all sped up, and it would have happily kept on going. It offered no sign of giving out, except I had to stop because that torch was getting a little hot, and it's ridiculously bright. Fuck, you rolled it. I've yeah. never seen a call it that rough. Cut that hot. So bundle wire, number 26 torch, you know, here's the result on it. It was just digging its way all the way through it. But let's just flip flop it to the complete opposite on this one. And we'll go for some very fine control. Now doing something like an edge weld out of aluminum, you need a lot of control. It needs to be perfectly smooth and it needs to focus in beautifully. And you can see really clearly here, it does exactly that. So plowing right through it, you can do it. Fine control on, uh, you know, say like an edge weld for uh, this aluminum here. You need that too. And this machine delivers all of it. You know, it's just, it's gorgeous. It's almost unbelievable. 
Now, after running through all of that with the 255 EXT, I decided, you know what, I've got to grab another one. So that's when I got a hold of the PowerTig 210 EXT from Everlast, which we would normally call the little sister of the 255 EXT. Not a lot of differences, only a handful of them, but still the same consistency, the same smoothness, the same everything you really expect to match the 255 EXT, less a couple of things. But let's go over some of those features right now. 255 on the left, 210 on the right. I actually started this stainless scoop on and I uh, started it with the 255 and then I finished it with the 210. So those both of them run at the same time. So this is the 255 stainless weld. Stop there, start again with the 210. There is a little blip at the end there. That was me. <laughs> Torch slipped off, wasn't paying attention, but relatively the same weld. I mean, they're nice and smooth the entire way through. Now I'll talk about the pulse settings because they're identical on both machines. And one of the things I absolutely love about these is, uh, both of them, is the pulser is stupid quiet. You can't hear it ticking or clicking or anything like that. So we'll just run it straight threes across the board just so you can check this out. Now, this is what it looks like without sound here. And I'm going to show you just to be nice here. If you've got earbuds in, turn them down just a little bit because these fans are pretty loud. Notice you cannot hear that pulser. That is really cool. One of my favorite features. I hate hearing pulsers. They're just annoying. But here we go. Let's just go to the extreme opposite on this one. Both machines will offer up to 500 pulses per second. And that's just, uh, you know, in automation, it's really cool. But once again, this one's a little bit louder. Turn your earbuds down or your volume down because this is actually audible. So let's get into some of the other stuff here, the uh, faces, features, and functions. Kind of do a compare side-by-side -side of the two machines, their panels, how they're laid out, because they're relatively the same, just like I said, a couple subtle differences. And of course, I'm going to get into the things that I don't necessarily like about the machines, and of course, the things that I do like about the machines, or at least my favorite functions. So starting off with the two top menus, both of them offer the same nine preset programmable memory. They're both digitally controlled. They have the same faces the same everything on them you know just just one is exactly like the other and the same thing goes with both of the uh, the wave controls the 2T4T operations how to toggle with those plus your pulse settings they're identical the only difference though the 255 does offer one more wave than the 210 does and that's the actual sine wave the 255 offers it but the 210 does not the same with the uh, stick functions, arc force, all the rest of that. Those are both the same on different machines, just different locations on them. And then we get into the uh, toggling between the high freak lift TIG uh, and your stick functions. Those are both in the same location, same type on both machines. Now we're going to get into a couple of things that I really love about this. Now, my, one of my favorite features is a toggle between the amp. You can just toggle one amp at a time or one preset or function at a time, which is really fantastic. Or you can push on the knob and you'll get a toggle of uh, 10 per uh, click, which is really cool. You can do some fast uh, jogging through the two of them. The next thing I absolutely love about this one, the purge button. Now both of these on the same are the same on both machines. They both have the purge button. Now this is really cool because whenever you need to set your flow rate on your Argon regulator, uh, you'll basically, <laughs> with any other machine, typically you'll just sit there, uh, you know, stomp the pedal or tap the pedal for a minute, get it flowing, run over to the regulator, then run back and then see if you got it right, whatever the case is. With the purge button, you just press that button, set your uh, regulator up, go back, turn it off, and you're ready to weld. I absolutely love that feature. So like I said, they're, they're pretty much the exact same machine, less, you know, the 45 amps, and of course the, uh, the duty cycle is actually different. Uh, the 255 has a 100% duty cycle, the major selling point for me, uh, whereas the 210 offers the standard industry 60% duty cycle, which is really not bad uh, at all. Actually, it's, it's, it's really awesome. And uh, they both offer you know a generous amount of controls on them between the 500 pulses per second. Your AC balance will go all the way from 10 to 90. Uh, I mean, it just there's they're they're really awesome machines. They offer a great deal of functions, but there's a couple other things other than the sine wave and the 100% duty cycle that the 255 offers, and that's what we're going to go over real quick here. Now, one of those functions is the easy setup for AC and DC. You can quite literally just go through your normal setup. You can click over to your easy setups, and the machine will pretty much start running itself uh, right off the get-go, which is really fantastic. 
And then the other additional thing that the 255 has that the 210 does not is the 6010 function specific for stick welding. Now, I don't do a lot of stick welding and I rarely ever run 6010, so for you guys that do, I mean, I, I understand that that's a really fantastic feature to have. It's not that the 210 can't do it, it's just that the, uh, the 255 has that specific function to make it just a bit easier. And the other thing that the uh, 255 does have that the 210 is not, one of my additional favorite functions on here is the spot timer. Now when we get into the spot timer, you set it up for however many seconds or however long you want that spot timer to go on there. You saw this in a different episode where I used it, but I'm going to set this up to half of a second real quick. And you just basically uh, point, click, and it fires for half of a second to uh, tack your, your piece in place, which, you know, it's pretty awesome to have some uh, nice little feature like that. Now, one of the things that I don't like about it, I told you I was going to get into this. It's kind of a small gripe, uh, but it's not its not really affecting anything, really. I really don't like the position of the gas inlet for the argon on the back side of the machine. It is kind of in the center, so on certain welding carts, uh, especially ones where, where I had where the, the uh, cylinder was on the back side directly behind it, it did kind of interfere a little bit. Or you can get a little 90, which is, you know, what, uh, like 2 $3. When I was trying to weld, it was pinching my line, but, you know, figure it out. Kind of annoying, but not that big of a deal at the same time. Now, this is only just a small bit of what these two machines can do. And if you want to know more about it, just let me know. You can drop me a line on the FabricatorSeries.com website. You can hit me up on Facebook.com slash TheFabricatorSeries or at Instagram at The.Fabricator. If there's something else you want to see with either one of these two machines or some more features, just let me know. I'll see if I can make it happen. Now, I'm definitely interested in getting some more Everlast machines, and they're definitely worth every single penny that I've ever paid for all of them. So if there's anything else you want to know or maybe another machine you want me to check out, just let me know. Maybe I can make it happen. Now, I want to thank you guys for watching as always don't forget to subscribe to the fabrication series youtube channel make sure you check out everlast welders because seriously they are actually worth it and i'm very proud to say that so have a good one we'll see you guys on the next episode